Rock and roll is your whole fucking life. Rock and roll is my whole life. Hello, Classic Rock fans. I am reporting a couple of days after seeing Tim Capello play a club gig at a local bar called Promises here in Milwaukee. Being that it was a pub gig, this was a little different than the typical concert I review on this channel. Specifically, it was a smaller scale of a show, but it was also a much more intimate concert. And that's a good thing. Now, if the name Tim Capello does not ring a bell, let me ask you this. Have you ever seen The Lost Boys? Yes, he is the friggin' ripped sax man from The Lost Boys. Perhaps the most identifiable visual from that movie. And his song, I Still Believe, is part of one of the best soundtracks of the 80s. Probably my vote for best horror movie soundtrack of the 80s. So besides The Lost Boys, Tim Capello has actually been a part of several things that I'm a big fan of. For starters, he was in a Miami Vice episode. Miami Vice is my favorite show. Yeah, in that one he plays a drug dealer henchman type, and he gets in a shootout with Crockett and Tubbs, which is a lot of fun. Helena Bonham Carter and Brad Dourif also appear in that episode, so if you haven't seen it, you should check it out. Another thing I know him from is a movie called Hearts of Fire. If you are a subscriber to this channel and you caught our Dylan Through the Decades retrospective about Bob Dylan, you might remember we discussed a movie called Hearts of Fire, which had Bob in one of the lead roles. It's not a great movie. <laughs> in fact, it's one of those so bad it's good kind of movies. And I don't know if it ever even got a proper DVD release, so I think you can find it streaming, but this is a movie that has almost totally been lost to time. But in any case, Tim Capello has a bit role. He's in the band, uh, I think he plays the drummer. Which is a mistake. Obviously he should have been on the sax. And uh, this mistake, I think, is probably the only reason why that movie didn't do very well. <laughs> Kidding, of course. Now, the main thing that most people should actually know him for is Tina Turner. Yes, he was in Tina Turner's band in the 80s and the 90s. You can hear him on the stuff she did for the movie Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. In fact, he's in the music videos for those. <laughs> watch any live video from Tina's band in that run, you can see him on all of the sax parts. I mean, these are fantastic performances, and as I've said in previous videos, I am a huge fan of Tina Turner's 80s run, and he is a big part of that. And more recently, he's been a part of Ringo Starr's All-Star Band. So yeah, this guy has had a long career that goes back several decades. I think he got started in the early 70s, actually. So there's just so much more to his story than just his scene in The Lost Boys. So let me just tell you how this concert went. For starters, Tim Capello is a one-man band. Literally. He sets up uh, a drum machine or something that plays backing tracks over the speakers, and while that music plays, he sings to it or he plays the sax parts. And in between the songs he plays, he tells a story about something from his life or career. He opened the show with an original track called Only You. And then he told a couple of stories that eventually led into his cover of Screamin' Jay Hawkins' I Put a Spell on You. But before he played that song, he talked about how he got the gig on Miami Vice, uh, how he learned uh, making mistakes can actually lead to good things uh, from a uh, experience he had on the set of Miami Vice uh, which was really interesting to hear and then he talked about how earlier in his career back in the 70s I guess he got kicked out of the famous club CBGB's for being too sexual on stage now I don't know the story behind that but that's quite a statement to make because CBGB's was a pretty wild club back in its day and then from there, he talked about seeing Screamin' Jay play that club and how 
that guy's performance really influenced Tim in his career. So in tribute to Screamin' Jay Hawkins, he played I Put a Spell on You. And while he was playing that song, by the way, he had two TV monitors behind him playing clips from that Miami Vice episode that he's in. So this was just terrific, at least for me. <laughs> After he did that song, he started talking about his experience on Hearts of Fire. Now I should mention, the person I went to this show with was my buddy Chris, who co-hosted our Dylan retrospective. So here me and Chris are at this show, and he's talking about Hearts of Fire, while we're thinking we must be the only ones in this room who've even seen <laughs> Hearts of Fire. Uh, so I don't know what to say. It was an absolute blast. His stories were really funny. My hero was the star of the movie. And he sucked too. <laughs> he said that he turned down a role in Beetlejuice to be in Hearts of Fire, which got a big groan out of the crowd. And he was like, yeah, I know. But he, he picked Hearts of Fire over Beetlejuice because he wanted to be in a movie with his hero, Bob Dylan. And I am talking about the one, the only, Mr. Bob Dylan. And that segued into him playing a cover of Bob Dylan's Highway 61 Revisited. enjoyed it. Chris is an even bigger Dylan fan than me, and he got a kick out of it, too. After that, he played another original track called Wiggle, and then he played the big hit, I Still Believe. But before he played I Still Believe, he talked about how he got that gig with the movie. That's another fascinating story. I won't ruin it here. And while he was playing I Still Believe, he had our whole group recreate the dances that uh, the female lead from The Lost Boys, I can't think of her name, um, the dance that she does in the scene where she's watching him play sax, he had us recreate those dance moves, which was a lot of fun. Obviously, I still believe is the main draw for most of the people who went to that show, and he did such an engaging and extended version of that song that everybody there certainly was more than happy with it. And then he followed it up with the cover of Tequila, originally by the Champs, and he did the, you know, Pee Wee Herman dance for a second beforehand, too. That's like a cheat code song. You play that song, everybody's happy. Can't miss with that one. And that was pretty much the end of the show. Uh, after he did Tequila, he gave a very gracious thank you to everybody who had, had come out. And then he said he was going to take a quick break and then come out to do photos and sign autographs and sell merch. So all things considered, the show was... Only six songs and a little more than an hour, I believe. And that's the nature of club gigs. Typically shorter than like an arena or a concert hall, but much more intimate. I mean, we were all really close to him on the stage and he came off the stage and played the sax while walking through the crowd multiple times. So like at several points, he was basically right here. <laughs> <laughs> next to me. Oh, and, and he, he got people to dance with him, which was a lot of fun. There was at one point, uh, and I can't remember which song, I think it was Wiggle, his original track, where he had a girl come up on stage with him and he just told her to dance as hard and as wild as she could, and she did, and the crowd was totally loving it. So it was a very engaging and fun show. I don't know how else to describe it. It was just fun. When the show ended, most of the people cleared out, but actually quite a few stuck around to buy merch and, you know, get a photo with him. And for everybody that bought a piece of merch, you know, he signed it and he did pictures with people. And I got to give him props, you know, for as high energy of a show that he just gave us. I would expect that he must be, like, tired, because that was a lot of energy on stage, and 
playing the sax is hard. I mean, his album is called Blood on the Reed, and that's because it's not uncommon to, like, bust your mouth open while you're playing. But despite all that, after the show, he was in a great mood, took a lot of time with each individual fan who wanted to say hello and get a picture and, and buy some merch, and he was really good about the photos, you know. He made sure everybody was happy with the pictures they got, and he was really gracious uh, with everybody who talked to him. I spoke to him briefly, and he was just as nice as can be. And that's the kind of thing you just can't take for granted, because some artists, you know, will make themselves available for pictures and autographs and stuff, but they won't necessarily be in a good mood. So, uh, big props to Tim for being such a decent guy after the show, as well as being such a great performer on stage. So as far as the merch goes, I bought uh, this print because I am a big fan of his work with Tina Turner. He was selling his album, this is called Blood on the Reed. I had already bought a copy of this a couple of years ago. I think he originally released this CD in 2018. I bought it a year or two ago from his website, but he's still selling copies of it. And by the way, all of the songs that he performed in the set that we saw are also on this CD. So if he's not coming to your town, uh, I would suggest buying the CD. Now if he is coming to your town, I highly recommend going to see him. This is a show that is going to be inexpensive. All you're going to pay is the cover to get into the club, whatever that is. We paid 15 bucks. Might be cheaper when he comes to your town. And at the very least, you're going to get a really enthusiastic performance of the song you most likely know him for. And on top of all that, you're going to hear some other cool stuff too. Again, this guy is a one-man show, and it's super high energy. And if you like the kind of show where you're in a club, and the performer comes off stage, and you might get a chance to dance with him, or at least, you know, clap as he plays really close to you like that kind of stuff is really fun i'll say this i don't get an opportunity to do that a whole lot so this was a nice experience for me uh by the way this dude is still in fucking crazy good shape by the way of course he doesn't look exactly like he did you know in the 80s in the lost boys but like up close dude is ripped like his arms are huge so um if you were impressed by his look back in the day, you're not going to be disappointed seeing him today. And it's impressive because he told us that he's turning 68, I think, this week. So that was crazy to me because he does not look that old at all. But like I was saying earlier, you know, his career did not start with the Lost Boys. It started much earlier than that in the 70s playing gigs at clubs like the CBGB's. So for me, it was a fantastic experience and a reminder that I need to dive deeper into uh, Tim's career. Uh, I definitely want to find out what it was exactly that got him kicked out of CBGB's back in the 70s, but uh, that's a story for another video, I guess. If he comes to your town, yes, go see him. You're, and bring friends, you're gonna have a good time. Maybe watch The Lost Boys the night before, but Wherever he plays, it'll be fairly inexpensive, you get there a little early, and then just wait for him to come on, and it's going to be a great night. So, thanks to Tim Capello for coming to Milwaukee, and thanks to the club Promises for booking him. I had never been to Promises before, that's a cool bar, but that's all I got today. So, thank you very much for watching this video. If you're a fan of classic rock, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Please check out the podcast that I do. It's about classic rock. And we've actually talked about some of the stuff I mentioned earlier. Uh, I'll post a link to the uh, Dylan retrospective we did that covers the movie Hearts of Fire. Otherwise, please find us on social media. Our links to Facebook and Twitter and the podcast are all posted below. So thanks again for watching and keep rocking. We just want to put some believers out of innocence. Have it out on Highway 61. Let's go home.